Hi, everybody. Welcome to the CT Tech Junkie podcast. We're joined today by Amy Levesque from the University of Hartford. She's got a great project. Some high school students are sending up an experiment to the International Space Station on board the, the new Dragon spacecraft that SpaceX is launching. The, the launch keeps getting delayed. Uh, we're actually hoping to get down there. In fact, uh, we hope to get you a really cool launch pad tour in this channel when we're down there. So uh, whenever it happens, we'll have somebody there. Hopefully it'll be me and we'll get that on there. But I do want to welcome Amy to the podcast. Amy, hello. How, how are you? I'm fine. Thanks. And so tell us a little bit about the, the experiment that, uh, that you're conducting here with the students. Uh, it, you know, they're, they're, it's not easy to get something into space. And, you know, how did, how did the whole process come about? How did you get this to happen? Um, well, th- all of, all of that was done actually before I became involved. So the students um, from the two schools, the Annie Fisher School and the University High School, along with some of their teachers, um, worked together on this project initially. So they, they were not the only students at their schools who proposed research projects for this. Um, a number of student groups got together and, and proposed different projects, and this one was selected. Um, it was one of, I think, only seven or so projects selected across the country to go up on this flight. Um, and was this specifically for the, the flight on Dragon, or, or would it have been on a shuttle if it had been earlier? It would have been on, it was actually originally supposed to go up on one of the Soyuz um, crafts, um, and it was supposed to go up in February, and that flight got delayed because of some some engine issues. Or actually, I forgot what the, the issue was. Yeah, I think it was engine engine related. There was some, some serious uh, pro- manufacturing problems that they were really worried about. Yeah, so so it actually turned out better for us in the long run because then it gave us more time to work on the experiments, and it also means now that the experiment will go up on the SpaceX instead, um, which will be pretty cool for the students knowing that it's one of the first or the first um, commercial flight to the, to the space station. It is kind of a historic thing, isn't it, to be a part of that? So so can you show us what what the experiment looks like? Obviously, it's already in Florida, packed on a space capsule <laughs> to go up into orbit, but uh, can you show us what, what they'll be sending up and what, it, what the experiment is for? Sure. First, I'll tell you a little bit about the experiment. So what the students decided to do was they decided to test the effect of parathyroid hormone on bone cell growth in space. And so they had some, um, the cells that they're using are rat osteoblasts, which are a type of bone producing cell. Um, and we had to use rat cells because we weren't allowed to send any human cells or anything of human origin up to the, to the space station for safety reasons. Um, and so what we did is we're, we're growing the cells in these vials. I have a, one here in front of me. Um, so this is the same thing that is being sent to the space station. Um, we're actually running on Earth some ground control experiments. So that's actually what I'm holding right now is the ground experiment. Um, so this has already been set up. So we have cells in here in this tube and then inside the tube there's another tube um, and I'll show you what that looks like. I can't open this up to show you but um, I'll show you what one of those inner tubes looks like. So inside that tube oops, inside that tube there's a, a glass vial which looks like this and it's, I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, I can see it, yep. Inside that glass vial is where the parathyroid hormone is and so you put this vial inside the plastic tube um, so the, this vial is inside the tube and so when it gets to the space station they'll take the plastic tube and bend it I see it break the glass and it'll break the glass inside and that activates it yeah and it exposes the cells that are in inside the tube to the drug so right now the cells and the drug are separate because the drug is enclosed in the glass vial but once they snap the glass vial then the cells will be exposed to it now, bone loss is a big issue for astronauts. We actually talked to astronaut Katie Coleman, who was on the space station for about six months. Uh, we talked to her about a year ago, mm-hmm. and she was kind of a human test subject for some, some osteoporosis drugs to see not only how it can improve astronauts' bone density in orbit, but also how it might be able to impact people who suffer from osteoporosis on, on Earth. What, what are you hoping to find with, uh, with your experiment? Um, well, I think mainly what we're hoping to find is that using a drug or a compound like parathyroid hormone um, that will be able to counteract the, the effects of bone cell loss. So by stimulating growth of the bone cells with this drug and perhaps other osteoporosis drugs, um, that it would be an effective way to, to counteract the effects of microgravity on bones. And does the experiment have to return to Earth for you to, to know what the results are? or will they, will they be doing measurements in orbit and then disposing of it? How, how do you plan to get the results back? 
No, so the only thing that they, that they'll be doing in orbit is snapping the tube, like I just described. Um, when the sample returns, we'll be able to open up the vial and look inside. And the main thing we're going to look for is whether or not the cells have grown. Um, so we're, we're looking for an increase in the number of cells. So if the cells grow, then that would give you an indication that, that the drug was successful. Right. And what, you know, the, uh, I guess the, the, the real advantage of, of the SpaceX system here is that it actually can return. Um, and, and before you would have, you would have had to probably have had a longer time to wait until the next Soyuz went, went back to Earth, right? So is there, was there an advantage to, to having SpaceX be the one to carry the, the experiment versus, versus the Soyuz? Um, it does decrease the lag time. Um, we're still not sure at this point what flight the samples will be coming back on. So we're not even sure when we're going to get the samples back. Oh, I see. So this may actually get loaded into the station, worked on, and then returned on a later, on a later flight. So it's not going up and down on the same flight. Nope. And about how long do you think it takes for the experiment to work? Um, well, we're running the experiment for six days. So once it gets to the, and I didn't really describe this, but once it gets to the space station, we actually have two inner vials inside here. And so there's actually two small ones, so okay. smaller than the one I just showed you. Um, one of them has the parathyroid hormone in it. The other one has, on this side, has the fixative. And so when this arrives at the space station, they'll snap the parathyroid vial. And then six days later, they'll snap the fixative vial. So the samples will actually be fixed. Um, so once they're fixed, they're going to you know, stop growing and just remain sort of frozen in time until we get them back. That's pretty neat. So there's, so there's you can you can account for however long it takes to to get to get things things back and shipped back to you from from orbit, which is kind of a cool concept when when you think about it. So so tell me about what it, what it was like for for you and and the kids to to be able to to get this this through. I mean, this must have been a lot of work, probably, and preparation went into getting into this. I'm sure it's a very competitive process. How did you feel, and how did the how did the how did your students feel about being a part of this? Um, well, I can say the, the students are, are really excited about the fact that this experiment, this idea that they came up with on their own, um, was chosen, first of all, um, to be part of this. And, you know, just knowing that something that they did is going up to the space station is just a really cool idea for them. So they're really excited about it. I think they're a little bit, It's it's been a long time. I mean, this has been going, been in the planning stages since the fall or since I think probably around November or so. Um, and, you know, they've been waiting a long time for this to finally happen. So I think they're sort of getting antsy for, for the launch to happen finally. Um, so, you know, they're really excited about it. And there's been a lot of delays. So hopefully May 19th might actually be, be the date that it actually takes off. We've, we've changed tra travel arrangements now probably about seven or eight times <laughs> since uh, since this this adventure has 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 kind of begun, so it's um, it's it's going to be groundbreaking no matter what. And and can you talk about maybe some of the things that the university has provided as far as resources go? I know that that um, the cultural lab there was was where a lot of this work was done. What what kind of things does the university have that are really unique to to a project like this? Um, well, I won't say I wouldn't say that it's anything that's unique. Um, it's just the fact that we have the equipment and the supplies that the, the students didn't have at their schools. Um, and the main thing is the tissue culture facilities because you, you need those in order to grow cells. Um, and so that's actually how I became involved. I wasn't involved in the early stages. The early stages of this project involved, um, like I said, the teachers at the two schools and also a, a person from, a researcher from Yale who, who was involved in the early stages of, of planning and mentoring the students. I became involved because they reached a point where they they had designed this experiment. They had all everything all planned out and the only thing they were missing was where are we going to do this um, <laughs> so they needed the place they needed the location and they needed the the, um, the equipment um, and all of all of which I have in my research lab here that I I use regularly so um, somebody reached out to me because they knew that I might be able to help um, and that was how I became involved and I didn't get involved in this until I think it was January early January that I first became involved and how does it feel now being kind of the center of attention on, on, uh, on this whole uh, experiment here that, that Channel 30, I think, did a, did a thing on you? I, I believe SpaceX last night um, tweeted you out and then put you on their Facebook page. So now you're, you've been blasted all over the space community. So um, <laughs> <laughs> were, were, were you expecting this kind of, uh, this kind of reaction from, from the public over, over something like this? No, not at all. Actually, I, I'm quite surprised. Um, I actually thought 
it was sort of like I just described. You know, I, I heard that the students were trying to do this experiment. I thought it sounded pretty cool. Um, I figured I could help. Um, and I didn't really think it would kind of blow up into this, this big news story um, like it has. So it's been sort of unexpected. And it's actually not bad, too, that a science, technology, engineering, and math stu uh, story got to be something that, that, that a lot of folks out in the media and beyond the scientific community found interesting. So that, that must make you feel pretty good. Yeah, and, you know, I'm just sort of, I'm a, I've been doing research for years. I'm just sort of used to, you know, just doing what I do and feeling like people outside of science don't really care about what I'm doing. So, you know, it is sort of fun when people get interested in what you're doing. So the, the students, I guess, when they when this is done, they're going to be able to present this uh, at the Smithsonian. Is that is that right? Yes. So all of the student participants um, who are sending experiments up to the space station um, are going to have the opportunity to present. It's going to be the first week in July, actually just before Fourth of July. So they're going to be able to go to the Smithsonian and present that week. Um, you know, tell tell everybody about what they did and what the results were. Um, and so currently they're actually trying to raise money so that they can all go. So they have, they've set up a fundraising website through donorschoose.org. Um, and they're looking for donations for, um, for funds to send them to the Smithsonian. Well, that's terrific. Well, we'll put that website up right under my voice right now so people can go there and make a contribution and, and contribute to probably uh, one of the most exciting uh, educational moments uh, that th these uh, young students have probably had, but I'm sure there'll be many more to come in the future, so we'll be sure to do that. And that'll wrap it up for this edition of the cttechjunkie.com podcast. Uh, we'll be back again pretty soon with some more interesting people from around the state making technology news. Thanks for joining us.